Welcome back to SA Wine Weekly. We're down in the Coonawarra. Our first Coonawarra episode, which happens to be at Leckenfield Coonawarra. And with Paul. How are we going, mate? Good, thanks, Nathan. And We're yourself? actually in your neck of the woods this time. Yeah, we are. It's nice yeah? to be here. Mm. It's nice to be here. Pouring, but it's nice to be well, here. Not though, pouring, isn't but it? a little bit misty. It's, that's yeah. why Coonawarra Free, like freezing, it at the time. Freezing, freezing. Yeah. Well, that's what you get from cold climate viticulture. You need to have cold oh, climate to have cool climate right. viticulture. And we've got the lovely Jade. Okay, host Jade, how are we going? Good. Good. I'm excited for today. Lovely to be in the Coonawarra. It's amazing up here. It's right. Good. So yeah. I think we should start because, as per usual, people have been whinging on take too long to get into the wine. So you tell us a little bit about uh, Leckenfield sure. and Coonawarra. Yeah. And um, while I get us, what are we having first? We're having we're having our Sydney Chardonnay Pinot Noir. Ooh, that's right. So let's have a little bit of history about the winery while whilst I'm uh, yeah. poorly opening this. Very good. So, I think field was founded in 1974, which would have made it, made it about the sixth winery on the Coonawarra Strip. That's a fantastic yeah. year, 1974. It was. Yeah, that's the yeah. year I was born. Was Very good. Okay. Yeah. That one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, and it was founded by a guy called Sidney Hamilton, who is um, who was the fourth generation of his family to be involved in winemaking in Australia. And Sidney had spent his... Um, uh, started off in the wine industry when he was very young, probably 15. Uh, before that, I believe that he wanted to be a ship's captain and sailed off to sea. That'll um, work, yeah. At about 13 or so. Uh, but believed that, that the sea wasn't really for him and came back and then joined the family firm making, uh, to make, in making wines. wine. Wow. And uh, he basically largely taught himself winemaking. Uh, he learnt French and German and to study uh, wine textbooks because all the literature on wine was written in French and Germany, in wow. German. And so from that, he taught himself winemaking, and I guess French and German at the and same French time. French and German as well. But he was a bit of a hands-on winemaker, um, in that he was also very good at his hands at, at building things. So one of his claims to flame, apart from building crushes and presses for the family wine business, was uh, to be one of the first to introduce refrigeration into Australian winemaking. And so... In the early days, um, you can imagine Australian winemaking in the um, um, in the 1800s and early 1900s. It was heavily orientated towards fortified wines, um, ports, and that type of style. Of yeah. Wine. Okay. Um, and in some dry reds as well. Of course, they were, they were very good, but not orientated greatly towards white wine. So. With people like Sid coming on to introduce refrigeration into winemaking, it allowed then cool fermentation and the and the pres- preservation of those lovely floral carriers you get from white wine, and then was also able to make a slightly off dry type of style as well. So Hamilton's Yule Moselle, which was Sid's, Sid's baby, was one of the two most popular wines in Australia during the during the 40s and 50s. That's an excellent, I would say useless, but it's not useless, but interesting fact. Yeah. I guess in nowadays there are sort of some styles like that which are popular now, like Prosecco, for example, is a modern type of style, or some off top of dry styles. They're, they're, they're still quite popular, but but not in not in that term of um, um, as as they were then. Now Sid then retired from his family business in 1955. He always set his sights on trying to find the best place in Australia to try and make the classic dry red wine, and so he sort of various, various places, um, including Eden Valley and parts of Victoria, Tasmania, Mount Gambia, um, and in his quest, finally centred, um, settled on this this region here, Coonawarra, because of its cool climate. And, wow. uh, and I guess in order to get the best out of Cabernet, you need to have a cool climate to get the, the most out of the fruit characters. Mm-hmm. And it's a variety which um, uh, it does... Is a little bit marginal now. You have it too hot, you lose your varietal characters. A bit, bit too cool, um, and it doesn't get so your right characters. Right. So this is a this is a pretty good area in most years to to get pretty consistent high quality cabernet. So Sid decided that this is the area um, where here we grow some grapes, mm-hmm. and there's a little road about a kilometre north of here called the V and A Lane. And the folklore at the, at the time was that you couldn't grow grapes in South East, in Coonawarra, south of the V and A Lane. And something magically happened on one side of the road that it was a bit cooler down this side. But ah, better climate on one side of the road than the other. That's right, mm. yes, mm. And, as, as you would expect. Um, now, Sid um, came here, and of course all the land north of the V and A Lane had probably been settled or taken up. Yeah. And 
this little sheep farm existed here on Warner's Corner, which is where we are. Yeah. So there's a little bend in the road and Warner's Corner had a sheep farm and it was up for sale. So Sid was recommended that he should buy it and I believe at the time was paid the highest price for viticultural land at the time in 1974, um, south of the V&A Lane and established his little winery and and viticulture business. So he grew Cabernet and of course he bought some Riesling cuttings because he's love for white wines still existed mm -hmm. and uh, he bought some recent cuttings from his Happy Valley vineyards and planted those and we still have those vines and we, we make wine from those stone vines still and that's, a, that's part of his heritage. Awesome, so yeah. we're, we're going to, our first wine we're going to have or is the Sin? Sin, yeah. 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 So this is, this is our white wine from Sin, we actually make three wines of this range, we make um, our our white wine, which is our Chardonnay Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. um, and we also use the same varieties, with a bit more Pinot Noir to make a rosé. And we use Cumar Shiraz to make a, a red wine, a red sparkling wine, which we'll try later on. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about this one. Okay. So um, very heavily built up with um, Chardonnay, so it's roughly 90, 90 3% right. um, Chardonnay. Chardonnay is the predominant okay. one there. Yep. Yep. And that's largely because in 2000, in 2020, which is largely where this um, wine comes from, although we do keep some older parcels to go back in here to get a bit more complexity, um, it was a very low yielding year in, in, in Kunawara, and so there wasn't a lot of Pinot Noir about, so we had to make do with mm. what we had. Mm. Ah. Mm. So, so that's why very it. light and fresh. Very, and very light and fresh. Yep. Yep. Um, so what are we smelling, Jay? Bubbles. <laughs> what do the bubbles smell like? Okay, it's fruity. Fruity. Yeah. A yeah. bit of fruity. A little bit of a citrusy tone. A little bit of citrus there. A little bit of citrusy tone. A little enhance a bit of yeast. Yeah, we we keep that on yeast leaves for quite some time right. until it's required, and so it gets a bit of that. Um, what we call autolysis character, so it's a breakdown of yeast characters to give some um, almond meal or those other little complexing things you get from um, ah. from from yeast. Yeah. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Let's have a little salmon. Mm. Mm. Very, very easy oh, drinking. It is. It is. Yeah. It's it is. almost on the dangerous scale. It is, it is. It is. Yeah. A little um, too easy. Why is, why is that so? That? Why is it so easily drink? Why is well, it so drinkable? drinkable. Well, mm. um, we've gone a little bit drier than a lot of the wines at this type of price point in the market, so yeah. it's, it's okay. nice, and, nice and refreshing, so you right. can look forward to a second glass of the wine. Excellent. Um, yeah. It's got some nice Christmas to it, um, but it's not so acid that... Um, no, the it's not so acidic very, that you can grab. Very yeah. little aftertaste. Yes. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But um, it's fresh. Oh, that's nice. But, but beautiful bead, though. You know, lovely fine bubbles, which is always a good marker for high-quality sparkling wine. Right. It's extremely popular this wine too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very popular. Extremely it popular. And naturally fermented, of course. The bubbles is not uh, it's not, a, not cheaply done. Mm. No. Mm. No, it's quite nice. Mm. You love your bubbles, too. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, well, what and you, that what, is a dangerous what, one to drink. Yeah, what do yeah. you think? What are you thinking? I'm thinking I could go through a bottle in a minute. It's one of those ones. A, a bottle just... a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's exaggerating. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a little bit over but the top, but... that definitely goes down a little too easy for yeah for bubbles. It doesn't have the same grip as some of the ones that I've had before and it definitely has, doesn't have that bitter aftertaste or anything like that, like mm. some of them do. This is very, very nice. Right, we've got to remind people too that all they need to do is comment it's whether it be on YouTube or Facebook mm -hmm. and then they can win an amazing bottle of sin up for grabs. Yeah, and then they, they could always take a picture and send it back to us of them drinking it in a different location. That'd be great, wouldn't it? So all the wines that are available that we um, bring on the show, all you have to do is comment on Facebook or YouTube to win these amazing wines. Yeah. What a great stuff. Like and share and tag your friends as well. That spreads it around a little oh, bit you more. Want, you want, yeah. Of course. We want other chances to win. The more you do, the more chances you've got of winning. And I do say too, oh, compliments to the host usually help with your chances of winning. Not Jade, me. <laughs> Every time I say that, right, they compliment Jade. It? They don't compliment me. Or maybe some compliments for Paul. That would be nice. That, that, that would, would be nice. That would be nice, nice wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right, so what a cracking start. That okay. is a fantastic yeah. start. Yeah, I, I'm not a, a huge You're sparkling not a big fan. Man. I'm, I'm, I'm learning what's quality there. Yeah. And um, this is. And what do you think? Oh, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. No aftertaste gets me straight away. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful for brunch. You no, know, the nice. I was about to say that. Morning. Yes. The history. I love the history. I know. Yeah. 
really. Did he have a beard? I forgot to ask you. No, I believe he didn't have a beard. Oh, um, he's uh, not my favourite Hamilton. Though, yeah, well, <laughs> well, he would have been quite good, I think. Um, the, Is he one of your favourite Hamiltons? I, you, un- you, I unfortunately never met him because the thing I haven't told you about when he came down to here, I said, yeah. he, I said he retired in 1955. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he founded this in 1974. So he was 76 when he came here. So this is um, um, Sid Hamilton, a um, bit old school. Um, he was, you know, as I said, he was the fourth generation of his family. Um, hands on, um, made the crusher, made some presses. Uh, next door was the original winery that um, that he built. Yeah. And uh, and we're going to have a look. We'll, we'll have a look. Yeah, awesome. But, but I believe that he welded the, welded the roof trusses to go in. So it's, he's a pretty intelligent guy. Wasn't he? Yeah. Still, still a test of time. Ahead of his Sounds like fantastic. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Great first. What a start! But, yeah. but he had a, also had a bit of a character, I believe, as well. And that, uh, that like um, we'll talk a little about about Kunawara and the saws later on, perhaps. But um, in order to plant vines here, it's, um, there's a there's a layer of very hard limestone underneath the terrassa soil here. Right. And in order to get the vines to penetrate down through that and to get their roots into the softer limestone underneath, you need to break up that that really top soil. Now he had a little bulldozer. You know, and he used to go out there and plough his rows and so forth. But being a bit old school, um, mm-hmm. a sports coat and bow tie on the bulldozer oh, to yes. plant the vineyard. Isn't it great? No. If you if you talk to um, um, the other other wine makers in the area who knew Sid, they speak very very fondly of him. Yeah, very, very much a gentleman. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I met his daughter uh, once. She's, she's not obviously a young Perhaps lady anymore. Part of a generation. And yes. and. Um, and if Sid was anything like his daughter, she, um, he must be an amazing man. They're just, just such a gentle, really warm personality. Mm. Excellent. Lovely. Mm. All right. So we've just gone. And all of a sudden, Ta-da. this magic... Pl- no, that's not right. <laughs> Kerry, can you come in here and explain to us <laughs> this amazing platter? <laughs> You've chosen some cheeses from the fridge. Let's hang on a sec. So oh. when the, yeah, pun- yeah. the punter comes here right. and they're going to do a, a tasting, yes. they come and they get to go to your amazing like selections. Did. Yeah, yes. like we did. Yes. And then they get to choose what they're going to have. You give them a little that's bit so of... That's so fantastic. A no. little bit of guidance Of the food that they've yeah. chosen? yeah. Or you just let them go for it? Yeah, I just let them go for it. I say, there's your food. Right. So, (laughs) quickly run us through what we've we've got here. We've got a selection of uh, mostly South Australian um, foods. The meats are from Barossa, I believe. The cheese, Barossa. Um, What sort of cheese is this little one here? Little baby bear, like a camembert. Right. Some pate and some delicious quince paste. Yep, some cheddar. Some cheddar and some beetroot crackers. Did, did yeah. anyone tell you that beetroot was my favourite? Or did you... I love beetroot oh, I too. I love beetroot The dip too. goes really well with some of our wines. Right. And the red pe- sparkling. We've, okay. Oh, wink, wink. All right. right okay. <laughs> and then we've, um, all right, so we've got everything we need. Everything you need. Right. So just quickly, what would we go with the Riesling? With the Riesling, we'd probably recommend some of the beetroot crackers with some baby bird right. cheese. Because we don't let Jade Something a little bit creamy. <laughs> Jade's Wait, I would have gone creamy. Thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll let choose, Jade. That's why, she, that's why we sat out further away. All right, so no thanks, heaps. No Great. problem, enjoy. Okay, so, Paul, we're on to one of your babies, aren't we? Oh, another one of your babies. The Riesling. Riesling? Yeah. Because yeah. mm. you talked up the Riesling when we were at uh, Richard Hamilton. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, what year have we got hit? We've got the 2019. 2019. 2019. Old Vines Riesling. Mm. And these are the ones that... These are vines that were planted by Sid Hamilton. Oh, I was hoping they, they were because. Yep. <laughs> so so originally... t- t- tell us a little bit. Oh, it's very crispy and glowy. Oh, the colour of that. Light and fresh. Mm. Yeah. Did you learn your card? Oh, do I have oh, my Riesling card? No, oh, oh, I do. Mm. Oh, there we go. So these cuttings came from Happy Valley. So Happy Valley. Just near us. So yes, when so, yeah. when, so, when, so when Sid retired, he uh, he had a little. A little farm up there where he grew, grew a few cattle and a, a little vineyard of, of Riesling. And so he took cuttings from his Riesling vineyard and brought them down here to plant. Right. Mm. right. In, his, in, his, in his quest for the best red wine, of course, you couldn't throw away. He, 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 <laughs> he, he no, loves no. white wine as well, didn't he? He loves white wine, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And Riesling's one of your favourites as well? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So when I 
did, did my wine training. I, I, I worked in a place that's which, which specialised in Riesling and then grew a, grew a love of Riesling, particularly older Rieslings. Yeah. They might come back later on, but they're beautiful when, when, they're, um, when they're young and, young and fresh. This yeah. has got a couple of years of age on it now, so it's just starting to get a couple of, couple of toasty notes. I mean, okay. Okay. Just try All right. Let's have a look. Well, I have, I have it's, it's great. And look at the colour, it's lovely it and is. fresh. It's, you get those green tones. Yeah. And green tones, yeah. I was about to say that. Yep. Does that have a bad name, Riesling? Does it have a bad name? Yeah, like... Well, um, it's an acquired taste, isn't it? No, I think so. A lot of the time. Well, the Clare Valley got to disagree, I think of it's, course. I think it's probably um, better to say it's probably more overlooked than it should be. That's a way better right, name. That's, that's, that's we'll edit that. That's when a wine kind of sewer jumps in. Riesling is one of the world's classic varieties. It is a... A wonderful variety, um, and I always love it because it's it is a type of thing that has got a bit of Christmas to it. it does. Um, I think historically a, a lot of Rieslings were made with a bit of residual sugar. Okay? Yes, right. And I think that's probably created um, the confusion of what Riesling may have been like, what people's mums may have associated, yes. and they're passed on yes. to, to their kids. Well, don't drink Riesling; we it's don't too drink sweet. that. It's got too sweet. The reality yes. is, uh, most Rieslings you'll buy now are going to be reasonably dry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dry. So. Um, a quick question for you. Is it difficult to make? It's difficult to make. In many ways, it's, you can say it's quite simple to make. Right. Except um, the analogy I have for those of your viewers who tinker with motors and so forth, um, I, the analogy I use is a two-stroke motor. Okay. okay. You have your lawnmower. You would be pretty good at doing tinkering with two-stroke motors, wouldn't you, <laughs> Yeah, kind of so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it goes well, it's a very simple machine, a two-stroke motor. But when something goes wrong, it's catastrophic. It's really difficult to try right. and fix. Okay. So we're making Riesling. If everything goes right and you protect the fruit, um, you don't allow it to oxidise, um, you ferment it well with some lovely clean yeast and doesn't produce any off flavours, in essence, it, it produces some really fresh, lovely, vibrant wines. Right. But if something goes wrong, it can be it can be catastrophic, and you then, mm -hmm. then need to get rid of it basically. So um, over the years, we've we've selected yeast which are lovely and pure um, in order to augment the, the fruit carriers of the wine, to get those citrusy type of carriers. Oh, it's very That's citrusy, making my mouth water. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right, Paul, let's, we'll let Andrew drink. Come on. Oh, very good. <laughs> can't have a taste. Stop show. talking, let me drink. I can't get over the colour of it. I know, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Have a drink. I'm trying to give Not you the bad, time to have I a know. drink. <laughs> Try to talk so you can drink. No, the, the colour is great. There is that little bit of greenish to it. Is, to it. Yeah, yeah. Right. and that's what we're trying to find. You know, in, on the vine, it's, oh, wow. um, the, the berries are reasonably small in the vine. They, um, it goes down easy. Um, Riesling, as a grape, is um, a bit unusual, and it's got little tiny little freckles on the berries, so little really? tiny little little dots around it. Right. And, and so it's got freckles. So if any of your viewers have freckles, they would probably like Riesling as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good for freckly people. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So, okay. so, so we pick this. So, yeah. <laughs> so we pick this. So it's not not too high in sugar. Um, on, on, on it's the not wine. too sweet. Yeah, it's well, well, not too sweet, but we're also not trying to get too high in alcohol in the wine. So we're looking at um, having something which is about 12, 12 and a half percent alcohol. Yeah. So, right. so not. So, right. so, so that can be a problem with reason, can it? The higher the sugar content, oh, no, the no, more no, concentrated, no, no, or um, oh, well, it can be, but it can also decrease the um, the varietal and the elegance of the wine if it's too high. So right. Right. I'm gonna. While you guys are chatting about yeah. how awesome this reason is, I'm, I'm gonna prepare the food. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna go. Go for gold, creamy. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have some of this awesome. Oh, it's so beautiful, doesn't yes, it? Yeah. It's really just, and that it makes your mouth water mm. when you get a whiff of it, and you expect that flavour to just take you over, but it mm. goes down quite easily. Yeah. I'm looking forward to. And um, the cheese with it. Like Kunawara, the, the cool climate we require for growing Cabernet is also the perfect climate to grow Riesling. Riesling. Because so it's cool and fresh now. So okay. if you look at the great Riesling areas of the world, they are grown in quite cool areas like, like Germany and, right. um, and Austria. They're, they're, okay. they're two of the famous regions yep. where Riesling is probably the prominent, um, predominant white variety. And okay. um, that coolness is, um, lends itself to having um, the acidity, which is, which is quite natural in the wine, mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to adjust the acidity of the wine. It's um, and it makes it a lovely, refreshing style. But thing, okay. the beauty about Riesling, which I love, um, and I'll keep on hanging this, is it's mm. lovely when it's fresh and young. Yes. Okay. Um, it's lovely when it's a bit bit older. To be honest, uh, uh, Riesling often goes through a little stage after about three or four years, where it's just neither an old wine nor a younger wine, and then you need to have a little bit of patience to let it go through that. Okay. So stay away okay. from the. Stay away Stay from, from it the then? medium. Leave it in the cellar a bit longer? 
You leave them in the cellar. The belongings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, just to allow to get get through into the more toasty type of characters. Right. Mm. Oh. Okay. Mm. But it's going to be refreshing and it's going to be right. They're just it's the same if any any wine. Mm. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? How do you feel? Mm. Uh, I actually really mm. like it. Mm. So mm. Jay, try to this. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm looking forward to the uh, food pairing with it. Actually, mm. I've got something in my head already that I think is going to actually bring out a real creaminess in the wine. The, che- the creaminess of the cheese creaminess is going to bring it out. Mm. 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 But you tell us yep. what, what, the, what it did to the wine for you. Good. Well, that's the, that's the advantage of having something like this, which has got a little, little bit of acidity. It, it, cuts, it cuts through the creaminess of the cheese, so mm-hmm. it ends up, ends up nice and refreshing. But I think it'll equally go well with a lovely bit of sushi. Oh, that cheese is beautiful. Mmm. Mm. Mm. I was okay. looking forward to the, the sashimi that you prepared for it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. no, right. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm thinking of some of your viewers who, who, who can't come here. They may, they may live in places like Adelaide where they, I guess sashimi is available. True. Sashimi mm. and a nice Riesling. Mm. 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 Okay, it certainly changes the flavour with the creamy cheese. Mm. Doesn't mm-hmm. it? It does. That is a very, very good That's pair. That's really nice. And it actually brings out the flavour. It was like creamy to start with. It brought out the flavour in the cheese as well. Mm. It was complementing both. It was. That's, um, I've got, I had this misconception of Riesling. I've obviously, um, since we've been doing the show, I've had some really nice Rieslings, but I always had this, and Chardonnay was a yeah. bit similar. Yeah. Like, they're kind of just, yeah. yeah. But to, to try and avoid, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm yeah. Getting, starting to get this real passion for white wine, because mm-hmm. there's some amazing white wines around, isn't there? And like you said, the climate makes a massive difference. Yes. And, um, South Australian winemakers, you know, no matter where they are, are picking the right variety for the right climate, which mm. is making a huge difference in the quality of the wine. Mm. Mm. And of course, we would pick this re- reasonably early. Um, it would yeah. pick this probably four, maybe five weeks earlier than we would pick some of our red varieties. Yeah. Mm. Just while the acidity is nice and high and uh, it is not too much juice, juice sugar in the vine. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Well, I think Kerry did a great job on the food yeah. pairing, didn't she? Mm. I'll claim and say it was like, mine. But yeah, of course but you it, it was a crack wine and a great little food beautiful. pairing that went with it. I'm starting to become a big reason fan. Yeah. You are. You're converting. It, mm. And of course, these vines are now at what planted in 1974, so that makes them. Okay. So. Uh, 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 <laughs> they might say uh, they're I 47. Gonna, I was going to say 47 years old. This I was going to say they're mature. I'm glad they are. I'm glad they are. There you go. I'm glad they are. Oh, yes. One of us is anyway. So that... That was really lovely. It was. And all you have to do, comment. Like. Like, share, tag a few mates. That's it. Win a bottle. And you can win a bottle. Share, it's gorgeous, share it with people and uh, get, the, get the word share out it, there. Share it with people. Yeah, That's get it. the word out there because that, that is a cracking wine. That is delicious. Yeah. And you're right. I did tend to, yeah. In I don't think, I don't think you really reasoning. liked it, so I might take that one. Oh, yeah, all right. right. You can get that one. <laughs> yeah. then. Well, it's got my name on it. It's all right. One. I'll take the sparkling. Righto. Mm. Excellent. I think uh, Paul's passion for the Riesling came out a little bit then, too. It did. Didn't it? You can yeah. see yeah. a shine mm. through. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely, right, isn't it? It's good. Mm. It good really stuff. is. It really is. Have you tried many Rieslings before? Um, not too many again, just like no. I, tend to, I tended to avoid it. I didn't tend to like the ones that I'd had before. Yeah. Um, but when they taste like this, yeah. it's something a little good. bit different. Mm. Yeah, especially when you're pairing it with the right foods. I've got a very yeah. in- interesting fact that um, you know, the wine industry goes through booms and busts and so forth, of and, course. and growth and so forth. Um, there, was a, there was a lot of recent growing here in, in the, um, in the it's the 70s and 80s because it was a cooler climate and the wine industry had been through a white wine boom. And it's the same white wine boom that got me involved in winemaking mm-hmm. initially. And so Riesling was planted here. And, and um, uh, of all the varieties, the, in 1990, uh, which was a, a classic red wine year, fantastic, it's the most amazing red wines, okay. Riesling was the largest tonnage of any variety grown in Kunora. Well, that's a great, useless, yeah. but interesting fact to yeah. say wine but, with, isn't it? But, but that's unfortunately, that's so, since then, you know, red, red wines have taken over a lot, unfortunately. But unfortunately for Riesling, um, unfortunately yeah, for most good. people, would be the Riesling wines. Area. That's good. A lot oh, of wow. Riesling's gone. It's only people like us who have actually preserved our vines and kept them going in the face of all odds that, um, that you can still have these. Mm. And it, it, Fantastic. we'll probably have to ask marketing, but is it a good seller? It, it sells well. Yeah, yeah. It sells well. Highly sought after? It's. It hasn't gone for a lot of growth, but it's if we 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 make that the same out every year, yeah. and it's 
it gets snapped out. On. Yeah, yeah, I think mm. if people knew this much about it, they'd definitely be snapping up a few more. It's yeah, that's right. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. If they paired it with it. That's it. Where you go. Creamy mm. cheese and a beetroot biscuit, not too bad. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, that really surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. How actually, I actually really enjoy that. I was a bit sceptical. Yep, yeah, I was, I was, yeah. yeah. But, but then on the hand, don't serve it too too cold. You know, serve it at about that 12 to, 12 to 14 degrees. Allow okay. the flavour to come out. Okay. Oh, no, now, Luke from Gornay World Tours, he's going to be clapping in his chair at home <laughs> watching this because he's gone on and on about it to me that the white wines have got to be... Don't get them don't straight sure. out of the fridge. Just yeah. Too cold. Let them sit for a little bit and then pour them and then... <laughs> Taste of it was totally different. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. He's not right. Though. He's not. We'll agree with him. But he's yeah. not right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If it's too, if it's too cold, it just subdues the flavours. You don't quite yes. get that you don't burst get of that flavour. Full yeah. Flavor. And and the and the roundness on your palate. It's, that's true. It's, too much has a big effect on your on your enjoyment of wine. Definitely. Hmm. It's real hard. So we're going to, um, the Merlot. Now, Jade and I were discussing this before. Merlot, now. Can I open it? Can you open it? Go for gold. Righto. I'm just feeling feeling a bit obsolete. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, you're right. Do you think about... Paul takes over. See, last time you were here, we talked about... Corks and yes. Corks. Okay. Okay. So, so think about, opening, about opening, up, opening up a opening up a screw cap can be not quite as romantic, but you can make it a bit more romantic. It's not as romantic, is it? So, so show me first how. First thing, rather than grabbing the top, grab okay. the bottom. Okay. Give it a twist. Only okay. open for the bottom sense. as well as the top. Yeah, sure. How am, how did I just learn that? Right. Okay. I, I thought he was a good. Oh player. come on. I thought he was a good. Oh player. come yes. on. Oh, that was fancy. And then if you want to really show off. Okay. You just hold it down your hand. And then oh. It's like, isn't that fantastic? Now you can pour it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, if you're going to go that extent, you can pour it. <laughs> and, and you can do the food platter too, right? So we were discussing before, essentially, more, uh, Merlot has been a little bit boycotted. It's not um, the wine that people tend to jump to. Do you think that's Australian, so? Uh, I'd or is say that it's more a little bit more in the US than it is, or, you know, uh, than Australians. I think I appreciate my Merlot very much. I like that full-bodied, well-rounded, very smooth taste. But a lot of people don't. And a lot of people would laugh at the fact that you're pouring yourself a Merlot instead of, you know, your, your cab salve. So, I mean, where does that come from? I mean... Merlot is, is full bodied and, and well rounded. Yeah, yeah. Um, Merlot is a fantastic variety. It's very much misunderstood. Um, the most expensive wine in the world is a Merlot. Is a Merlot. <laughs> Hang on. So, Hang on. That it. The most expensive wine in the world is a Merlot. Merlot. Which one is it? Chateau Petru. Uh, we know the price range of it? Oh. <laughs> Well, above what I can afford to drink too many of, unfortunately. But you're looking at... Have you ever tasted one? Looking at two and three thousand dollars a bottle. Uh, no, I have never had the pleasure oh. of uh, trying a Chateau Petit. Oh, we don't have one. We don't have one. We don't have one. It's a very important variety in, 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 um, in Bordeaux in France. Okay. It is a tribute to have, have some roundness to it. Um, it does. It's smooth. Not a lot of... Places, so, um, apart from probably the probably New World, make it as a single variety. They often blend it with a bit of Cabernet to, to, to increase the tannin of it. Yeah. But um, we can get it ripe here, and uh, it's got some beautiful flavours to it, and some berry fruits, plums and so forth. Um, we also really concentrate on the wine, whereas a lot of people have the thought that Merlot is a softer, rounder wine. We mm-hmm. don't mind a bit of tannin in our Merlot, so we're looking at oh, something a with a bit, bit more structure. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, eh? I would think that probably... Um, I'm going to uh, check the colour. Yeah. Mm. On my napkin. Oh, on your napkin. On my napkin. We see, we've learnt now, haven't yeah, we? Haven't we? Yeah. If you don't have a napkin, a white plate does a, does a good a job. Does the same thing, oh, does it? Yeah. There you go. It's just upstaging me everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I like the colour so far. But yep. See, I'm partial. I'm partial to a Merlot. What do you like yeah. about the colour? It's, it's, obviously, it's a lot lighter than a It's Shiraz lighter. A... It's lighter. It's got that still richness to it, but it's still got that clarity. As far to as Merlots go, like. would this be a lighter or a spot on or lighter or darker? Or? Well, we, we sort of concentrate on trying to get some structure around Merlot. So we're not trying to make a really big, big, heavy style of wine. Yeah. We don't try to make a big, heavy style of any wine that we make. We're looking at some elegance. And elegance is really important in the, all the wines that we try to produce. Mm-hmm. And But we regard it very well, I think, in the, in the Australian market for our Merlot. So I think that it wouldn't be... Too out of order to say that we're probably regarded as being in the top 
three producers of Merlot in Australia. Cool. Now I'm looking forward to it. Oh, okay. yeah. Now oh, yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward Have to it. Have a wish. So it's a concentrate. We're, we're looking at... Um, um, a wine that's got some a, a, a different flavour and some strength to it. Uh, with okay, that's, I'm expecting that's a lot stronger of a scent than I was uh, really expecting from mm. the Merlot. That was that's full almost uh, pepper black currant yeah, yeah. straight on the nose. Mm. It's a bit spicy, I reckon. It is. Mm. It's got a lovely fruit lift to it. It's, that's oh wow! Oh, yeah, okay. To, to me, I can't. Sm- Can you not? No, uh, fruit just overpowering smell of fruit, mm. and it, it actually really surprised me how strong that's, it was. That, yeah. Kind of blew me away a little bit. Yeah. Like, mm. All right, ladies first. No, no you, Paul. <laughs> oh, you looked like you really enjoyed that, didn't you? Mm. Tell me a little bit about it so I can have some. Oh, that lingers nicely. A black currant tea type lingering taste. It's mm. got that real fruity aftertaste. But that's a mellow that I could easily drink. Mm. But it's got some intensity to it. It's it not... does. It does. Yeah. No, the tannins are really nice. It grips really nicely. Well, it's definitely not soft. It's not as soft as I expected yeah, no. it to it be. Was, but it does have roundness to it. It's yeah, yeah. Some... Well, the... it's, it's, so it's, explain it's, the difference between softness and roundness. It's got structure and ends of texture. Yeah. Okay. Really. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. Now, I think Merlot has been promoted, and what, what you may be referring to is that Merlot has been promoted as being a, a soft variety. Yes. And I think then a lot of wine makers then trying to make it into then a soft... Then they turn it soft. Soft into wine. Right. So we've, we've taken it for the variety and said, let, um, as let's we do with all our wines, yeah, let's just let the grape variety speak for itself. Yeah? Um, so we've... Wow. Um, we've we've um, recently planted some new clones of Merlot, which are a little bit smaller berry size than perhaps the traditional clones in, in Australia. So is that a, a younger, a younger vine, or those vines are quite quite young now, right? Okay? But they get a bit more intensity of, of flavour. So the smaller the berry, the more intense. That's right. You give them a bit more colour extraction as well. So, and this is what we're doing here. We got a nice colour in the wine and so forth. So a lot of the wow. a lot of the clones that go into in, into winemaking have been selected over the years for various purposes. And the original clones of Merlot, although the variety comes from France, a lot of the um, the Merlot that was grown in, in painted in Australia in the 70s and 80s came from selections from California, uh, which were probably bred because they were slightly higher yielding, maybe. Um, okay. Bigger, bigger berry size. And in recent times, um, those varieties have been, those clones have been replaced. So it's the same variety, wow. but just different. Is it part of the climate cultivars. as well over there in California? Or oh, perhaps so. It... Yeah, perhaps so. But um, I think it's probably more, more to where it's grown. Now, um, here we're probably blessed, and some of our older vines are, are from um, are from the 1982-85 Merlot. Uh, one of those vines, one of those vineyards, is dry land grown as well, so we don't have any irrigation on those vines. So that also almost compensates for the fact that it's a, oh. a slightly larger berry size. It's got smaller berries because we, we don't irrigate it, and, so then, and then combined with that with this okay. with this with this, with this newer newer clone. So higher irrigation equals bigger berries. Well, it, lower it can do. Well, it depends on how much you apply, apply irrigation. This, okay. is, this is a viticulture one, so um, you can apply irrigation to pump up your vines and make them produce lots and lots of fruit, right. or you can supply just enough in very dry years to keep the vine ticking over, so it doesn't doesn't lose its leaves, and that's the way we we, we treat it. So, so we we have um, we we have the ability to um, apply. The, Drip, drip irrigation to most of our vineyards, mm-hmm. and in most years we we don't need to turn it on. But in some years when there's a drought or we don't we have prolonged periods of, of dryness, then we put a bit of irrigation on, and that just helps just stick the vines bit. over. Because the worst thing you want is leading up to harvest is for all the leaves to fall out of off the vines. Be because then you don't get your photosynthesis, you don't get your, don't get your ripening. It's all those things come into yeah. trying to grow a there grow a grape. Right. Mm. I'm pretty impressed with this meal. I mm. am impressed with this meal. I am pretty life. impressed. It's mm. not what I expected at all. So, mm. pairing wise, mm. I think. Uh, what are you going for? I'm going to go the pate. A bit of the pate. I'm going to go the pate, I mm. think. Okay. What do you reckon? Sure. Great choice. Let's give Great it a go. Great choice, all right. So, um, I'm just going to have a little bit more because your type is out when you pour it. Um, so we're just going to go straight pate on this awesome wow, beetroot it biscuit. Like mm. something else that doesn't smell like a merlot to me at Was all. It? No, 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 no. It's well, I hope it's, it's a good thing. It, no, it is. It really <laughs> is. The flavour in it is unbelievable. Mm. But I expected that 
yeah, when you get that Merlot, obviously that smooth, what they call that smooth facade of that Merlot mm. is what you expect to smell. But that's got some intense flavour in it. Mm. Yeah. And again, it's got some, it, it's got some persistence to the palate. It doesn't fall short. Yeah? No. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's quite dry. There's no residual sugar at all in this one. Okay. Is, it, mm. is it more tannic than usual? It's to, to it, me. It, like, it, it, to it, be it, honest, it, I haven't drank a lot of Merlot. Yep. Um, well, I probably drink a lot, mm. but not often. Um, it seems to be a, a, that just a little bit higher on the tannic side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got some tannic. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the wine's only two years old, so it's it I needs a little so bit of time. Depends to, on age yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm. So um, and as it as the wine ages, those those sounds will become soft. That, yeah. that, that, that just helps help preserve the wine. So I but guess also, how how long would we let in a perfect world? Oh, Merlot, um, like any of our red wines, um, it would age for 10, ten years or more easily. Mm. Okay, it okay. can still sit there. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Mm. Yeah, mm. Well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Try yes. a ten year old one. You, you, now. You, you guys try the I'll food pairing, and um, around about what would this. Um, Oh recommend God. retail be? Oh, I recommend retail's uh, about twenty six, twenty seven dollars, mm. or maybe even twenty eight dollars. That is beautiful. <laughs> That's a bargain, isn't it? Yeah, such I think a so. quality mm. wine. We're so lucky, aren't we? We've well, got such a good choice of wines, and uh, this is uh, this is a great region for producing Merlot as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Have have oh. we won any awards for Merlot? Oh, we won a few awards for Merlot. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we're, we're not going for a hat trick. Not going for a hat trick. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we have have won the local trophy with Merlot. Yeah, we've um, oh, wow. um, uh, I was in a I was in a hat trick for the Brisbane show at one stage with two Merlots in a row, but um, then they decided not to give any more trophies to Merlot, <laughs> so they stopped. So I missed out on the hat trick there. It must be the fate of my life. <laughs> mm. That is absolutely delicious. Mm. Good pairing. Mm. The other side of this wine, Jade, is the, that... The pairing's done. beautiful. I was dying over that. That was just absolutely delicious, that. It's whiskey and black pepper. Mm. It's a good pate, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, it is. Mm. Oh, that. I had to get over the pate before I paired it with the wine. Mm. Actually, really no, the it's quite nice. Wine, it's quite nice. It actually yeah. makes it spicier. It does. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not a bad pairing at all. Not a bad pairing oh, at all. Nathan. Right, eh? Oh. Nathan. Nathan, you were talking about the tannins before. The, yeah. That gets some mouth-watering as well, so you get some... It's that sort of those, it does. Uh, those juices going through. Yeah, to, and the grips of the, food the, the yeah. pepper in that pate as well. Mm. So when you have that with the wine as well, it's just mm. making that extra spiciness come out mm. of the wine. What do you think? Oh, that actually blew me away. That's couldn't speak for a moment there. Well, not that. But <laughs> it's just um, a, a really, really. I'd love to. Um, not that I'm hinting, but I would, I would love to try a 10 year old one. Something a little bit more aged would yeah. be. Oh, no, really I just. That was really be, nice. It's be beautiful, I'd just, but yeah. the comparison of that would be really different. Yeah. yeah. Or just like a. I'd like to try the most, ex, the most expensive wine in the world that's a Merlot. That, yeah. He's hinting. That's yeah. hinting. Yeah, we'll go to I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, get it pulls later, yeah. get out of his cellar. But, um, yeah. <laughs> it's, I should have a word to our local hotels that have one perhaps on the side. Give some music. Give us a discount. They want, want to give a discount. <laughs> um, That's it, mate. How do you feel think, about that pairing yourself? Pairing, beautiful. But beside it, the most, the best, useless, but interesting fact ever on the whole show. The, mer, the most expensive wine in the world was a Merlot. Was a Merlot? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that really surprised me, actually. Mm. What makes it so valuable? Yeah. It's well, it just, just well sought after and well marketed, probably. Uh, but it's ages very well, and a lot of those wines that they. They appeal to the people who can only afford to buy them. Mm. Very, very small quantities, yeah. mm. and uh, only only made when it's Good superb. Mm. 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 Good question. Yeah. Good question. And of course, Nathan, all, all these foods we can get our local IGA in town here. Right. Let's so tell. Me, you've been talking that up. Tell me a little bit <laughs> about the local IGA. Yeah. So we're very fortunate here. Now, it, proper, uh, our nearest town here in Kunawara. I should tell you about Kunawara first. Kunawara is, um, is a little town. Kunawara's got a population of about 85 people. That's the population of the township of Kunawara. Now, oh, wow. I don't think it's 100. 
At 85 or so. Just, just okay. shy of 100. Yeah, so you know, people are not getting like that. Yeah. But, but, but quite fortunately, we have a large town nearby. We've we, we got, we got Panola, which is five kilometres south of here. We're oh, right, right in the middle. See, I was thinking more Narracourt. Oh, oh no, 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 no. We, okay. we wouldn't get to Narracourt. We'd go to Panola. You had more to Panola. Because everything, everything okay. you need to have is, is in Panola. So, ah. sorry to our Narracourt viewers. Sorry, Narracourt. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, they've got everything they want in Narracourt. You better bypass. They've got everything they want in Narragut. We've got everything we want in Panola. <laughs> so, ah. okay. so tell me a little bit more about Panola. So, um, yeah, so we're very fortunate in we have um, uh, an IGA who prides itself on having um, a, a wide range of, of, of foods and things that you wouldn't normally expect in a town with a population of one and a half thousand people. Right, so, the local so we have a, a fantastic cheese fridge, you know, cheeses from all around the world, okay, and meats, dried meats. All right, all right stop. Mm. We spent a little no, time. No, no, none of that. Today. But what, oh, did what, what cheese were you chasing? I was chasing the triple cream roux. No, the mm. black ash. Oh, the black ash. Oh, where they do a brie that's covered in ash. Yes. So it's that real ash covered brie, but it's black on the outside, and then as you cut through, it's creamy in the middle. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Did they, does the IGA? Oh, did they have do it? anything like that? Yes, absolutely. Oh. Right. So we who, do we, who do we talk to at the IGA? We're going to go. Out, we know we're going to go out there and film it now. Well, oh. they actually allow anyone to go in there. Even you would go in there, Nathan. You could probably go. Oh, in well, there. I'm not so yeah. sure. I'm not so sure. <laughs> no, anyway. On search of the black oh, so I said Jade. Please, please. We said Jade. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But if they say no, then I'll go in. Yeah. And it's a family run. It's owned, 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 owned by a family, and they yeah. great, give great opportunities for the, the local kids to, to to find work and work experience. Uh, they have a. They start off sweeping the floor, then they get. Get to do all sorts of work and work at the IGA, and they can make a career for themselves as they wish. But it's a very supportive town, and in that um, uh, they support the local area by having great, great, great food, but also support the local people by providing opportunities for, for, for the children. Yeah. And uh, they work extremely hard. I don't know, but every time I think I'm doing working too many hours here at the winery, I just think of these people who in the IJ, they, they just work there. and work yeah. and work, and they just do a fantastic service. We're very, very, very fortunate. Right. Mm. How lovely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That so, was absolutely beautiful, that meadow. That yeah. was, wasn't it? And not at all what I had expected. Oh, thank you. So thank you for the surprise. Oh, very good. Well, it's been full of surprises. It really mm. has been. The Riesling was a surprise. Right? Yeah. And now the Merlot. Well, actually, looking, I am really looking forward to the next one, though. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, that's so good, you can just have it by itself. You say that every time I do a shit. I know. Yeah. Mouthfeel and fullness of the wine, so it gives, gives the impression of being sweet without being sweet. A real big citrus taste, like mm. almost a lime sort a of... A bang of citrus. Yeah.